let's talk about you growing up in Israel um, because you have like kind of a different background than a lot of my guests that I have on. So tell me a little bit about that. Did you grow up in a religious family? Super religious. Yeah. Orthodox, which is kind of like the equivalent to being a Mormon here. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, Boarding school, woman only. Um, You're not allowed to talk to men or touch men. Even when you're a teenager, you cannot have a boyfriend. You study the Bible every day. You dress up very covered. Um, You pray to God three times a day and you read the Bible every day. Um, On Saturdays, you don't touch any electronics. You don't drive. So you do all the Judaism, 100% of it, fully. (laughs) That's how I grew up. So generally, I mean, do you consider your childhood happy? Like, were you okay growing up in that kind of strict religious family? Or Um, were you already feeling a little bit like chomping at the bit a little bit to get out of there? That's a great question. Honestly, um, as a child, you don't know any better. And um, that's where you're used to. And you think that that's normal. I think cutting into like 12, 14 teenage years, going into middle school, high school, I started realizing that I really don't feel belong. Um, I wanted to be different. Um, I started exploring online different countries. And I wanted to go to summer camp in the US, went to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I kind of wanted to to be elsewhere. So I didn't really feel belong as a teenage. Do not get me wrong, I love my family, I love my friends, um, I love the country, but I do not belong there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, so um, so then you went on to um, be in the IDF, right? Yes. Can, and that's mandatory, I believe. So yeah. can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes. So you turn 18, um, women do two years of service, they serve two years and men serve three years. Um, it's mandatory. You cannot choose unless you have any disabilities mentally or if you're even disabled in your legs. So you can still do office jobs. But if you're fully healthy, you have to go. They give you a gun. I had an M16. It's a very long gun and you kind of wear it like this on your shoulder. Um, every day you have to wake up in the morning and clean it. And the commander comes when there is like every morning they make sure that your bed is organized and they do all the kind of like I would say the daily tasks that you have to do. Um, They come, they lick their pinky and they check that your weapon is clean. And if not, you have to do 20 push-ups, and you're being kind of like punished to obey. That's basic training. Um, Basic training is also six months of sleeping in tents with 20 women. (laughs) Um, Very challenging because we all get our periods together. It's very contagious, a lot of hormones. um, And we don't really go back home to see our families besides once a month. So you kind of do laundry in the sink with like dish soap. (laughs) It's very challenging. Um, And as an 18 year old, um, I was a baby. I was a kid turning into a woman that was like real quick because Mm -hmm. you have to feed yourself, uh, learn how to survive in certain like survival methods that you didn't know exist in you. And um, the conditions are very hard. But after you finish basic training, it's pretty fun. Um, They put me in the Air Force and I was a fitness trainer in the commander unit uh, for the Air Force. They specialized into helicopters and they're all paramedics in the field. So they go into the battlefield and when they have people that are injured, they carry them and they treat them in the helicopter into the hospital. So that was really fun. Um, I was in charge of all the, um, you know, the two years of the people that came into my unit. I was their fitness trainer. I was in a really good shape. I had crazy abs and I was running and doing lifting weights all day. Um, I don't look like that anymore because I <laughs> like more, looking more feminine right now. But um, mentally, it's very immatured me a hundred, a million percent. Like I became... Um, very independent and I think that thanks to the IDF and thanks to the military I had the courage to move to the United States by myself with no money Um, I had like $200 in my pocket when I moved here I had a visa I didn't have a green card I was just an immigrant and I think that the only reason why I had such courage to move to a new country was the military service and made me who I am I was gonna ask you if you think that that was a good experience and something that is a positive thing for young people to experience experience before they go into the workforce? I wouldn't call it positive experience for young people because war is not fun. Mm -hmm. And it's very traumatizing to live in a country where there is constant war. And, you know, politically, the Middle Eastern um, conflict is not going to be solved anytime soon. Mm -hmm. It's really active right now as we speak. So um, it is positive as, um, as an individual. 
it's very the tools that you receive as a as an IDF soldier as any soldier I'm sure even in the US military are very very um, you know challenging but when you accept them and you actually become what they want you to become which is a soldier um, you get the tools that no school or college or class would ever give you yeah so that's the positive thing yeah did you you didn't actually go into battle did you um yeah we had an active war in 2015 and I was right on the Gaza Strip and I was watching the border and every four hours you have to switch with other people in your unit um, you can't fall asleep you have to stare at the same area the whole time so I wasn't a warrior myself I wasn't in combat but when there is active war they put you in a different position because there's no time for a fitness trainer to be at the gym doing push-ups while you need to be actively Mm -hmm. um you know kind of watching the border so I was actually doing that too which was very hard you're technically mentally exhausted because you have to sleep and then go back for four hours sleep go back and the food is not as good during the war because there's no time to cook so you Mm -hmm. eat kind of like tuna cans and Mm -hmm. beans and Mm -hmm. kind of nasty but again I'm really grateful as when it was happening to me during that time I hated my life hated myself I felt like a prisoner I was like I can't wait to move to a different country and beat the hell out of here sorry for (laughs) my language but um, now looking backwards you know it's been six years almost since I've finished my service I'm so grateful like honestly like now everything that happens to me especially in that industry which is not easy a lot of photographers are not easy to deal with especially Mm -hmm. male photographers I kind of treat it as like you know chips like it's just like easy for me now Mm -hmm. if something like challenging happens to me I'm very like I take it very easy I'm very chill compared to my girlfriends that are just Americans and I love them Mm -hmm. but they are very dramatic Mm -hmm. and they break a nail and they start crying and I'm like I've been through so much worse so whatever happens I kind of embrace it and I kind of look at solutions instead of crying over it yeah I mean there's something to be said for going through like those trials and tribulations that are really difficult that really set you up to be able to cope with life's problems in general like later on Um, it's never fun in the time um, when you're having you're dealing with something that's like traumatic or really challenging or really difficult but it does if you can get through it it does set you up to be able to manage life better I've definitely seen that and I try to remind myself of that when I'm going through a challenging time and like as much as this sucks right now like I will be grateful for this experience later on down the road because I will see like the things that it taught me the things that made me grateful for so it's like always trying to see things with like a silver lining so I I can totally relate to that Hello, my amazing listeners. You know how much I love bringing this podcast to your ears every week. So if you're looking a way to support the show and get some fantastic perks, I've got just the thing, my Patreon page. With plans starting at just $5 a month, you can be part of our exclusive community. Your support not only helps to keep this podcast going, but it also unlocks some really cool bonuses. Imagine getting access to the live streams of my interviews as they happen. You'll be right in the middle of the action, seeing all of the unedited moments. But that's not all. As a Patreon member, you'll also get exclusive bonus content. I'm talking extra mini episodes where our guests answer questions submitted by you. Plus, you'll have access to my fine art photography and behind the scenes videos, giving you a sneak peek into my creative process. And guess what? If you opt for a discounted year-long membership, you'll save even more while supporting the show. Longtime subscribers even get free HRU merchandise as a token of my gratitude. So want to join us? Head over to patreon.com slash hollyrandallunfiltered and become a part of our growing community. Your support means the world to me. Let's make this podcast even better. <laughs> 